everybody, it's Christy back with another video and today I want to go over another bang for your buck item and that is the Magic Fly set of 24 gouache paints that I purchased on Amazon. So a little background on how I ended up with these paints. I wanted a nice, so gouache in general is kind of newer for me. I love Holbein gouache, but it's very expensive. And so I wanted something that I didn't feel precious with that I could play with in my bullet journal specifically because while watercolor is wonderful in my bullet journal, it tends to do a little bit better with gouache. So I originally got a Hemi Mia gouache palette and that was great. At first it was nice and it definitely for the first six months was okay. But jelly gouache's consistency is not quite the same as a regular gouache. And it also dried out and became really hard to re-wet. And in general, it just was getting frustrating. So I was waiting for Arteza to bring back their set of 24 gouache paints. For a long time last year in 20, and this is being filmed in February of 2023. But in the middle of 2022 last year, Arteza's 24 set of gouache was just like out of stock forever and ever and ever. Um, I did, I do have a set of their metallic gouaches that I love. And so I wanted something that was like that level of quality, not going to light the world on fire, but just like good enough that it was better than jelly gouache. And so I had been after it, after it, after it, it wasn't coming up. So I finally started to look for comper, like comparable items on Amazon. And this came up and several people in the Amazon comments or reviews said um, that this paint was identical to their Arteza paint, that the tubes were bigger, that they thought it was a better deal overall. So I think when I bought it, it was between $16 and $17. I couldn't be certain, but that's around where it was. As of the timing of the filming of this video, it's about $13 on Amazon. I have seen it fluctuate anywhere from about $12 to $17. That being said, that's less than a dollar a tube. If you get it for 12, it's 50 cents a tube. Um, so that's really a good price. So let's open it and I'll show you what's inside. Um, you can see mine's been well loved because I ripped it. Um, but here's what we have with these paints. I'm gonna put all of the trays out. Hopefully you're gonna be able to see all of them. So you can see all the colors. I can't promise these are in order. They have been well loved by me. Uh, I have used them all. And so, yeah, we're going to get all four trays on here. And we'll talk about the pros and cons. So here are the four trays that it comes with. You've got two whites, which is awesome. You've got a black. And then we've got a couple of reds. Um, we don't have a very good cool red. I will say that this crimson is a cooler red, but there is not a pink in this set. So the one thing I would say if you're buying this set is that you probably need um, like a mauve or a magenta or um, something like that. I have, uh, I think I bought from Windsor and Newton permanent rose and Bengal rose and I just add them to the palette and it works perfectly. So those are my add-ons. There's a violet, three blues, a phthalo blue, a cobalt blue, an ultramarine blue, solid choices. The greens, you have a sap green and a viridian and then this seaweed is kind of like a little bit darker than the sap green, a little bit more in the middle green tones. This emerald green is a little bit um, warmer of a green. Uh, Viridian is obviously a nice cool green. Yellows, you've got a lemon yellow, which is a cool yellow. You've got a warm yellow in gamboge. You've got some nice neutral tones in here with yellow ochre, raw sienna, raw umber, burnt umber, burnt sienna, light apricot, gray. I think if I had to choose, I would have chosen to maybe get rid of one of these five, six colors and given myself a pink. Um, but that's just because I like to do florals, so pinks are nice for me to have. Um, and then there is one orange, and that really is good. I mean, this is this burnt sienna it works as a nice dark orange. Raw sienna works as a nice like dark to the yellow ochre. So they work really well together. So for like I said, I right now it's thirteen ish on Amazon. And it comes with brushes. Full disclosure, they're still in the packaging. I've never used them. So maybe I will swatch with the brushes because I am going to go ahead and swatch these. I will probably swatch with the flat brush. Um, I do not have high hopes for the brushes, but I really don't care. 
They were an add-on extra, and if you are somebody who's brand new to this supply, might be nice to get some brushes. So anyway, this is the paints all laid out. The tubes are how big a piece? Does it say on the tube or does it say on the packaging? I know they're bigger than the Arteza ones. Okay, so these are 18 milliliters. There it is, um, 0.6 fluid ounces. I believe, don't quote me on it, but I believe the Arteza ones are either 15 or 12 fluid ounces. So you're getting more paint as well. I'm gonna show you some of the paintings that I have done with these. I have not done a painting specifically with these. Maybe I'll do that here in this review. Um, but I think it's important to show you the paintings that I have done with them. And there's a big reason for that. So I'm gonna start with my bullet journal setup for February because I know that I use them because I just did it. <laughs> so these are the paints. I'm going to set them in the corner. Maybe if they'll go back in the packaging. I'm not going to keep this box. I've just kept them in the box so that I could show you guys the box, show you guys how they come packaged. They were safe in the mail. Um, I felt very secure about the way that they were sent considering they're a budget supply. So here is my February bullet journal setup. Now, I want you to look at this and realize that some of these were definitely um, Magic Fly paints. So the greens were Magic Fly and they mixed with multiple of these colors. Uh, there's some Arteza in here, there's some Winsor Newton in here, and there's some Holbein in here. And you can't tell. <laughs> you can't tell who's who, right? I mean, you know the metallics are metallic. Like you can see I have some metallic in there. But you can't see a difference in quality. So with gouache, I at least, because I'm a beginner at it, I don't think that it's going to make a big difference if my gouache is super high quality or not. So here is another painting that I did with them. Again, all of the greens are from the Magic Fly set and I think it holds up. I don't think they are better or worse or any different from any of the other colors that I'm using in here. And then here's my Dutch door setup for the month of February. So all of the same kind of floral arrangements there. I just wanted to show it. This berry is the Holbein color. The pink, that Bengal rose, is a Winsor & Newton color. And the metallics are Arteza. Arteza, I don't know how you say it. But I just wanted to show you how nice it paints down. So let's go through a few more pictures that I have used my Magic Fly with. Oops. So here is my bullet journal from last year. And again, I like to use gouache in my bullet journal. So a lot of these pictures that I have um, are from my bullet journal. So here is my December 2022 layout. There is definitely some Magic Fly in here. The browns and the greens are for sure Magic Fly. And again, I just think it, it, it works beautifully. It mixes beautifully. That's the other thing is that I feel like it mixes so nicely. Um, here is a good example of where I mixed it. So all of these pumpkins were done with the red, the yellow, the orange, and the burnt sienna from the Magic Fly set. So these might have been exclusive Magic Fly, um, Magic Fly done paintings here. And I just think, like, look how good that pumpkin turned out. And I just think it's so nice. And the paint was so nice to work with. It dries down on the palette and re-wets if you want it to, which for me with gouache is important. Obviously, when you re-wet gouache, it's never going to be the same consistency, but it definitely dries down on the palette, doesn't crack up, isn't looking, it doesn't look any different on my palettes than, um, than Holbein, for example. Let me grab a palette. Here's a palette I was just using. So this is Magic Fly. This is Magic Fly. This is Magic Fly mixed with Holbein. Um, this is Magic Fly mixed with Holbein. This is Holbein. This is Windsor Newton. This is um, Royal Talon's white gouache because it's what I have. With white gouache, I just use the tube I have open before I open another one. So I haven't opened the white in the Magic Fly yet. I will open one of them for the swatching purposes of the video. Um, but you can see, like, there's there's no difference here in quality whatsoever. So I just 
felt like I wanted to take a second and talk about this particular art supply while it's still available and still inexpensive. Because as we all know, sometimes with these budget things, they come and they go. And then when they're gone, they're gone. So this is a great deal. And the other thing I wanted to say about it is that because it is in tubes, so it isn't like it's jelly gouache price, but it's in tubes, which means that you can take as much as you want out and the rest of it is going to stay gouache consistency. For me, this is a better value for my money. I know that the jelly gouache palettes are cute and they all come together and you don't have to think about what colors you're going to get out, but they dry out and I've, I know people have had the mold before and I just think this for your money is a much better value. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch these out. We'll talk about the swatches and see if there's anything weird. I'm going to swatch them on both white and black watercolor paper or mixed media paper just so that you can see the difference and maybe we'll do a painting with them and then we'll just talk at the end here about my final thoughts but hopefully you found this useful hopefully you um if you've you've painted with these before i would love to hear your experiences in the comments but i have not had any trouble with these paints and they have been a hidden gem for me so let's get to swatching
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so I already filmed this, but it didn't save. So we're going to film it again. Um, it didn't save right. The mic wasn't on. So we're going to do it again. Uh, here is my swatch with all 24 colors. Well, there's 23 colors and then two whites. So technically there's only 23 colors. This down here, I'll explain in a minute. It's not one of the paint colors. If you watch the swatching part, it is something I did after the fact. Um, and this is what I'm calling my loose floral swatch. So anytime I play with a new set of paints, I usually just try to see what happens if I create a loose floral with them. And I got something really nice here. I really like how that turned out. The ranunculus worked really well and it was able to. So one thing about gouache is that it will move a little bit less than watercolor, but it will still move a little bit, which is why it worked really well to make those ranunculus flowers. But overall, this worked really, really well. This set, again, is missing a pink. I, this carmine is, or I'm sorry, it's not a carmine, it's an alizarin crimson. It's a good paint, but it's not a true pink. So I mixed it, and this is kind of what I got when I mixed it down. I added a little bit of the orange to it to see if I could get something a little pinkier. And it was a little bit more pink, but in general, I would say that that is the one thing lacking about this set. I did go ahead myself and pick up just a Winsor & Newton couple of pink gouaches from them so that I would have what I wanted to round out my personal purchases. But um, overall, this is really good. This color is called Emerald. I would not call it Emerald. It's much more of a turquoise -y, sea green, um, cobalt teal kind of deal. It's a great color, but I wouldn't call it emerald. This one is the Viridian. I think it's called Viridian or Thalo Blue. And then this one is called Sap Green, but it's much more akin to a hooker's green. And then this one is called Seaweed, but it's much more um, of what I would call a sap green. But they're all really good greens, and I do use all four greens frequently. You can see that overall this looked really nice. Most of these guys came out of the tube pretty nicely. I just used a little dollar store. This is my dollar store plate that I just use to swatch on and it will be easy to wash off. And it's great for this kind of thing where I'm going to swatch a bunch of paints at once. Um, the white did have a little bit of like loose goo come out of it. So did the aquamarine and this um, I think was a raw, raw sienna. It did a little bit too. But overall, everybody else had a pretty nice consistency coming out of the tube. I will say that this aquamarine really had a lot of goop come out with it. And it is a little bit shinier than the other paints. So I think that has to do with whatever filler was separated from it in the tube. It did the same thing on the black paper. We're going to talk about the black in a minute, but that's the ultramarine swatch. See how much more shiny it is than the others. Um, so yeah, I uh, I think that has to do with whatever came out of that tube. I will play with it a little bit more. I wasn't just going to squirt a bunch of it out because I think that probably if I got in there with a toothpick and just mixed it up, we would have been fine. Um, that's going to happen with any tubed paint. You can run the risk of it separating. But again, we're talking about a budget brand here. We're not talking about something that is um, an artist grade product. It's a bang for your buck product. Uh, so yeah, that is what we did here. And then I'm just going to pop the uh, swatches on the black here. I did go over a few of these a second time just to see if I could get a little bit more opacity, but overall for being on black mixed media paper, I think these ones turned out pretty good. I, this book is a, uh, Stillman and Burn Nova series, which is black watercolor paper. I really love this paper for this particular purchase, uh, for this particular purpose. There's the words. Um, I, in general, know how this paper works so I wanted to use it to swatch and not every gouache color is going to be super vibrant on this paper that wasn't the point it was just to see how their opacity kind of laid down and I think it was pretty good for for a budget for a budget quality product obviously if you're using something a little bit better you're going to get a little bit more consistency in opacity but any of these could have mixed with the white which was quite opaque and quite nice and you would be able to use them on a darker surface. And this just kind of give, gives you a good idea of who's going to layer well on top of who. And if you were thinking about doing that, even on white paper, this is good information to have. 
All right, so what this comes down to is, should you buy these paints? And I, I mean, they're in my Bang For Your Buck series. So I think that without a doubt, these guys are a slam dunk. And when you think about the fact that the pricing is around between $12 and $17, I think right now they're, 13, they're around $13 on Amazon. But don't quote me on that because the price fluctuates. I got this plate at the dollar store for a dollar. And I can keep these paints in the tube. They aren't going to get weird. They aren't going to get dried out like the Hemimia gouache sets tend to. And I can use them as long as I keep them in good conditions for a really long time. And I can use the amount that I need when I need it. And I can use it as I want it, whether it's dried down or if I want it wet, I can take it right out of the tube to do that. So this whole setup with the dollar store plate was not expensive. It was under $15 for me. And that is way less than those Himimiya gouache palettes. And I just think that this is a better bang for your buck. So if you're looking for good gouache paint, I would definitely recommend these, especially if you are new to gouache and you want something that's not precious that you can play with that, that will help you to learn. And um, yeah, so does anybody else in the comments have these paints? What is your experience with them? I would love to hear what more people think of these Magic Fly paints because I haven't seen them recommended too, too much around the YouTube sphere. And I think that they are a hidden gem on Amazon. So I'm going to link them below. It's an affiliate link. Any, if you buy it, it just helps the channel. It's not going to cost any more to you, but um, I will link these below. And I can't wait to hear what you guys think about them in the comments or if you really like a certain budget brand of gouache, why don't you put those below too so that we can all benefit. And that's going to be it for me today. I hope that this gave you some good information and inspired you to get out your gouache paints and paint something pretty today. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.